How are you doing? Yeah, good. Yeah. Doing yeah. all right. Yeah. Generally, do you really mean that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That's cool. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's all good. Um, so, yeah, could you tell us and the, the audience more about yeah, the sure. tape? So, I guess the the base of it is, is I play Tally and she's a cleaner and she's finding it hard to find somewhere to live. This is happening in Cornwall quite a lot at the moment because <laughs> lots of, you know, it's holiday places and whatever. So, um, and she ends up cleaning this house that's empty and mm -hmm. she kind of moves in and she, there's a grand, there's a, a, an upright piano there and uh, she hasn't played for years. She used to be a songwriter and her inspiration just comes back. She ends up recording an album secretly in the house and finds a four track recorder in the, in the, <laughs> in the um, cupboard. So she gets hold of a tape, records this album secretly. The owner comes back. I don't want to give too much about what happens, but the tape ends up being a bit of a talisman. It kind of sort of changes the people whose hands it comes into and who listens to it. But there's also this down in Cornwall, I don't know if you know much about the mythology down here. It's the sort of Celtic, um, my God, it's just so funny because some some of the old boys who I was chatting to right down in that Land's End just drop it into conversation, the mythology, like it's part of, you know, part of what happened, like watching EastEnders. Oh, and also there's Selkies and whatever, you know. <laughs> Selkies are these, like, seals that turn into kids. And okay. anyway, the, the, you kind of get, I live down here, and you kind of get infused with the sort of the mythology. And it's so ancient and old and all these stone circles and... um yeah that just started to weave into because the idea that we're all changelings that we can change we get so stuck in what we are don't we and like mm. what our patterns are <laughs> even if we don't like them we get stuck in them and we can't leave our job because it's secure or we can't do you know whatever yeah. and just the idea that not only is tally with her music starts it becomes like a changeling but, but there's also this changeling who you just see and she has her own sort of musical theme and she's a child on the rocks and so what came first? Was it the the inspiration for the, the story and then the mythology was kind of weaved in or was it the mythology that inspired the idea for the story? It was the story first, yeah. but I think it would, it would just be hard for me to write anything down here without putting that in because from such a young age down here, that was part of the stories. I spent a lot of time up on my hill, on this hill in Zena and um, we all knew that's where the charmers used to heal children. So people used to bring these children from all over who were ill and the charmers would heal them up there. And that was just like, you know, okay. that was like as normal as <laughs> where the spa shop is. I don't know. It just seemed like, yeah. so the story was the most important thing. And it was one of those ideas, you know, when you get an idea and you, it just doesn't go, it just grows and grows and grows. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, a, and then it's like a ripe fruit, ripe apple. And you have to just kind of do something with it. Yeah. Um, so do you think, um, you know, there's a, I suppose, a lack, a lack of understanding about that, like Cornish history in like wider England and the UK. Yeah, it's really interesting. Thank you for saying that. I think there's a, we went, we, another documentary I did got nominated for the Celtic Media Awards. It was a music thing. And we went there and Cornwall was the only Celtic area of Cor of of the UK that doesn't have doesn't seem to have any specific funding or um I don't know it just feels like it's forgotten a little bit you know um mm. and if you think about it it was so cut off from the rest of the country I don't know if, you, if you've driven across Bodmin Moor but it's like you know seasons pass as you're driving over it you know? <laughs> and uh, it does it does feel really separate and you know back in days of yore that would have been really far so yeah. you know whereas the, we were seafarers and so we were more connected to Brittany and the Celts there and to Wales than we were to the rest of the country when I say we I wasn't around then you know but um, <laughs> yeah so yeah I mean I, I want to know more about the history down here but I, I'm just learning but um it's absolutely fascinating actually and you can feel it's palpable it's not just like something's dug up you just walk in the landscape down here you know and see mm. and just stumble across these stone circles you know it's just Mm. and um what about uh sort of your um i don't want to say introduction but like your i guess relationship with music because that's clearly a big feature of the, the the film and it's clearly something that's part of your life so when did you start making and creating music 
Well, my, so my father's a songwriter, a sort of <clears throat> fairly, fairly well known on the sort of folk folk scene. Um, and my stepmother was an Irish folk singer, so I was brought up around it. It was just kind of normal. Mm. Um, that's what you know we did, and we had sessions and in the house and whatever. And um, but so songwriting was something I always did in particularly teenage years. It was just so so. I mean, I swear I'm going to get a piano from my kids. Are well, have to, <laughs> make sure that it's here when the kids are teenagers because you just get to like really, even if it doesn't turn into a song, you get to bang out your feelings. You know, kind of like it's that or yes, slamming doors. Yeah, it's just ah, it's so good to have a piano. And um, yeah, so I found that really, really. That's when I started to write properly and then just kind of got picked up by a few sort of music industry people and then I was also an actress and I went to drama school and studied theatre and directing and but the music just kind of took over and uh, and then I had this whole kind of you know manager in a gold Rolls Royce who wanted me to have a nose, nose job yeah, <laughs> okay. did you not like the whole shebang <laughs> wanted me to sing in an American accent <laughs> like yeah can you do it again Martha a bit more American I'd be like oh. <laughs> Oh, and, wow. and I, I just sort of let that. I peeled away from that because it just felt so wrong, you know. So, and when you're young, you just, you just, I don't know. It's really hard. I can remember thinking, what would Joni Mitchell do? <laughs> um, it's really hard to say no to opportunities, even if your heart's. Like, my heart was just so, so dead in that situation, you know, creatively. And then I just got my own thing going. Found a guitarist and secretly started, um, yeah, basically built up a following. And and then I ended up sort of, you know, opening. A, Acoustic Sage at Glastonbury I've toured and wow. sung with Zero Seven and and done the odd bit of acting but acting just kind of took a back seat but writing obviously I just became you know I've written all these albums and mm. then I started to get into documentary making and then the writing and like this just this whole idea came together and I didn't necessarily want to be writing it writing the music <laughs> acting in it directing it all but there was but there was no I couldn't see another job I could give to anyone else in that scenario because um hmm. yeah i had to be playing the person who was writing the, i don't know if you know much about the the film but the songs i record my character records on the piano in the four track i'm actually recording them in the scenes i think it's okay it's, first. oh it, wow so usually they you, add those record. on afterwards and but no, you no, no, no. So okay. the album you get with it is recorded that's in the scene you can even hear the steady cam guy a little bit like um, oh it, wow it's like yeah so that and that was magic because you have to let go of your ego but i had to be someone else in the scene you know yeah but in, you know in a, in a recording situation i don't know if you know much about you know recording albums and that but there's, there's just endless opportunity really i mean within time yeah. you know but to keep going over another take another take another take um and to have you know um to have it having to happen in that moment so my producer was hidden away in another room Wow, uh, I mean that. Oh, that brings up so, so many questions I have about like music production, and um, I, I guess how do you how do you be happy or content with the take you have, knowing that this is permanent and it's not like you're you're filming it, and it's not like oh, it looks good, but in post we're going to like go over it and uh, with uh, sonically but it's kind of like i'm capturing my entire essence I I in this moment and i i, mean, we could, I, we I have to be happy you, with it yeah 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 i mean of course we get bit, but the take is the whole take yeah yeah um i don't know i just kind of it's actually quite liberating sometimes not not having the the pressure to do something your best or your or the most perfect because as creative beings we, we never we never reach our own standards do we you know yeah. and i've put out you know seven albums now and 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 certainly something i've learned is that um by the time it comes out you've written something that's much better and you wish you put it on that or you know kind of you never mm. sometimes you have to remember that someone else is your audience so if it felt right in the moment i just had to trust it and yeah it's quite liberating listening back and going, oh my gosh, I didn't play that perfectly, but that was utterly how Tally played it. Yeah. And the magic's there. Like quite often it will be like raw, but the, you know, the, there's more magic. So yeah, I don't know. I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> it's a bit, ah! <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I wish we had more time, but um, yeah, sadly we don't, but we are very much looking forward um, to seeing the tape. Oh, thank and, you. Um, I'm, 
I'd be very interested to actually kind of, yeah, go back and really revisit this conversation once after watching the film, because I, I think I'll have um, a lot more sort of introspective and insightful bits that I would, I would personally want to kind of pick up on, but yeah. Well, very feel much. free to ask me anything at some point. Yeah. We'll do, but yeah. Nice we... one guys. <laughs> have a good day. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.